Hey guys, you're looking at my um, little factory for a bunch of effects and things that I'm working on. I'm going to do a series of very small uh, videos covering a bunch of these things that I've made and others here over the next few weeks. But I'm using Monk's Active Tile Triggers and some other things to do some really cool stuff. So let's drag in a few of these items. Here's a, a chair, table, there's a longer table. Imagine that I'm building a scene with these. These are prefabs, right? So everything comes all fully loaded in it. Imagine I'm building a scene with these. And imagine in this scene that instead of a table standing upright or a chair standing upright, I might want to make it uh, fallen over. So I'm using multi-face tiles. Here's a very damaged version of it to quickly set whatever I want in terms of you know the table's uh, status. But this is not all I'm doing. Here's a table knocked over. Here it is smashed. Um, if you have access to Forgotten Adventures, there's a ton of things in that library if you're a Patreon to be able to do this. This is all Forgotten Adventures artwork. But I'm going to show you another thing here that's really cool. These are not just able to be changed quickly. I can also knock it over. Or my players can knock it over. Uh, maybe there a fight breaks out and they want to uh, knock it over and stand behind this table for cover. You can hear some of the sound effects going on. And then it gets a little bit more complicated. This has a light and other things attached to it. And if I double click it, it asks me to uh, roll. So I'm going to try to roll with advantage. And if I do, the light is extinguished and it falls over, topples over. And so I want to show you guys how to do this today. So let's get into it. So what we're going to use today is a few modules. We're going to use multi-face tiles, and I'll link to all these in the description. We're going to use Monk's Active Tile Triggers, and we're going to use it in combination with a module called Tagger. And we're also going to use uh, Monk's Token Bar. And then the last thing we're going to use to make the prefabs is Token Attacher. So let me just point this out. This is a Tagger thing. So once you turn it on, it'll introduce these tags into really every kind of object that there is. So whether it's a, a token or anything else, um, you can then set a tag for it. So like I can say tag one, two, three, and uh, another tag that's ABC. And you can just separate tags that way. The reason you want to do this is so that you don't have to reassociate everything. If you want to make prefabs, if you're just doing things in one scene, it doesn't matter. Um, when you work with uh, Monk's Active Tiles, uh, it ends up creating a lot of associations to the tile ID. Well, that ID changes if you use it in another scene. So if we want to use prefabs, we have to use something that's more permanent than this tile ID, and that's where these tags come into play. So uh, there's some limitations with it now in terms of like, I can't deploy more than one of these tables onto a scene unless I change the tags associated with the table. So I'll show you an example. Uh, this one toggles or deactivates, it actually toggles activation or deactivation with anything with tables dash chairs one tag. Well, the thing that has that tag is this light, tables dash one chair. So I've tagged that light with this, and that means that it will always find this tag no matter what scene I post it in, and it will turn it off and on. Now, you may be wondering if there's a way to, to get around this limitation. I have been working with the developer to do that. So by the time you see this video, maybe that's a thing, uh, but don't count on it until you research it. So let's go create one of these. Um, what we did was we just dragged this uh, this tile out. This tile is just a, you know, I've got a bunch of tiles here. It's just a chair tile. I call it chair 1A standing. And then I have 1B and 1C fallen or broken versions of it. So I put that chair down. And the first thing I do is want to get multi-face tiles working. So once it's down, you can right click it and you won't see all these options here. You'll just see the plus and minus. If you click the plus, you can just pick the next image, select file, and it'll put that image here. Keep doing that until you get all the images that you want, and then they're just something that you can cycle through. So that gives you something where you can just drop it down and make it anything you want very easily. And remember, that's unrelated to the dynamic stuff that we're gonna do with our active tile, excuse me. So uh, now we wanna go into here and we wanna click into triggers. We're gonna activate it. I'm activating on a double click just so it doesn't automatically get done. Uh, when you're in actual gameplay, you may want to limit it to once per token. I don't know. But uh, I've got a sound effect here. So the first thing it does is launch the sound effect. That's just a thud sound. And then I'm going to do what's called cycle images. So if I create a new action, uh, cycle images is a new one. And I want it to apply to this tile. So that's right. 
and I'm going to cycle through all these different images. And you can just add a new image, grab the next one on the list, select the file, and it just becomes another image in this list. And then you may want to uh, start with a certain image. So that's how you do cycle images. And then every time you activate this tile, it'll cycle to the next image. So that's why when I select my token, and I double click this tile, it'll go through that cycle list until I get back to the chair standing up. Okay, so let's look at this more complicated one really fast. This is my main tile. It's essentially just this table and chairs. This time I'm going to do a strength ability check, and this is what requires the monk's token bar module to be added. You'll create a new action, and when you create it, you'll do the request roll action. And you want the triggering token to set it off. In this case, it's going to be a strength check of 12, and if they succeed, then the table will topple over. So I have some flavor tech. It'll be a public roll, so everyone will see that it's rolling. I'm going to bypass the special dialogue that token bar introduces, and I'm just going to go straight into uh, where the player can roll it. And then uh, they're going to, I'm going to continue regardless. If anyone passes, uh, I'm going to continue the process. The next part of the process is I'm going to cycle the image just between the two images of the table toppled and the table not toppled. I'm going to play the sound of clattering happening. These are all things, by the way, that are available in my module. If you want to get these already pre-made, you can get these. And then I'm going to um, toggle the light that has the table and chairs. So if I select my player, double click on my table, it prompts me for a strength ability check. It did not make it so the table did nothing and nothing else happened on the list. I can keep attempting to do that. You can change this for your own game, of course. And now the light went out and the table is now following its ground. And you could introduce other things like walls and stuff like that, but rather than get too complicated, that's where we're at. Here's that light that I had it automatically put out. Once you create this, of course, you can then put it into a prefab. So if I use my I have a dot utility token that I use a lot. That's what this is. You just drop it on the on the thing and you say, all right, I want to attach everything to it. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to grab everything. It's all now attached to this control token. And then I can go in here and I can create a new actor. In this case, I've created an actor called Tactical Decor Table and Chairs 4. And I use multi and mat. Those are codes so that you can search my library for things that are interactive like this. And then you uh, just click prototype token, make sure you have that control token selected and you say assign token. That will essentially make this so that it's now coded and you can drag it out anytime that you want into any scene. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Stick around and follow this series for more of these. There's quite a bit to go through, some really exciting stuff I can show you guys that will make your uh, ability to, to do really cool things with your players and new experiences for them uh, just that much better.